Welcome to Spreadsheet Geek. In this video, we're going to take a look at normalizing and standardizing data. By the end of the video, you should understand the difference between these two operations and how to do them in Excel. This video was made using Microsoft Excel 2019. What is normalization? Normalization is taking a set of numerical values and scaling them to a specified range, usually zero to one. But frankly, if you can get them between zero and one, you can scale them to between zero and a hundred or any other scale through multiplication. Your original values can be a set of positive values negative values, or a mix of the two. As of Excel 2019, normalization is only performed through a manual formula entry. There is no normalization function, although it can be very confusing because there are some functions that begin with N-O-R-M. Those are actually functions to standardize data. For the purpose of our lesson, when you think normalization, think scaling zero to one, and when you think standardization, think about standard deviations around a mean of zero. This is the formula to normalize a value in your data set. In the numerator, you have your value minus the minimum value in your set, and in the denominator, you have the maximum value minus the minimum value. When you're done normalizing your data, you will have one value equal to zero and another equal to one. For the normalization and standardization examples in this video, I'm going to draw data from Yahoo Finance. If you go to Yahoo Finance, uh, you can type in the symbol of any security they have listed on Yahoo Finance, and you can click on historical data and get the daily market data for that security going back in time. You just plug in the dates you want. <clears throat> I'm gonna plug in the last 10 years for a security called the Spider S&P 500 ETF Trust, which is an S&P 500 large cap exchange traded fund. So here's the data that I just pulled out of Yahoo Finance. It takes up the first seven columns of my worksheet. And I'm gonna go ahead and hide some of those because we're not going to use them. We're only concerned with the adjusted closing price and the date. So what we're going to do is calculate in this cell the daily percentage change in this S&P 500 stock fund. So I'll plug in a little formula there and I'll take this percentage change out to four decimal places. Let's go ahead and populate that down to the bottom. Now down at the bottom, I've gone ahead and while you weren't looking, put in my minimum and maximum values in my data set. So this is my data set and I wanna normalize this data so that every value is between zero and one. So let's go back up to the top. And using our formula, let's go ahead and type in the manual formula entry. So x normalized equals my value minus the minimum value. And I'm going to have to scroll down to the bottom to get that. Hit the F4 key. And I'm going to divide that by my maximum value. Hit the F4 key to fix that value minus my minimum value. And we're going to make that in absolute reference as well. So there's my first normalized value. You notice it's even though my sample data was negative, this is between zero and one. 
and all of these values will be between 0 and 1. So I like to kind of sanity check my data. If I look for the smallest or greatest percentage loss in a day, I think it would be this one out of my negatives. So the market was down 1.75% that day. <clears throat> that corresponds to a normalized value of 0.4121, and that looks to be the smallest one on my screen here. If I look for the largest percentage gain in a day, it looks like probably this one, the market being up 1.6% that day, and that corresponds to the largest number in the right column. So it looks like normalization is correct here. There is one more thing to point out if we go down and jump down to the bottom our minimum value of our normalized data is zero and our maximum value is one. So that's what we expect with normalization. And one more thing I'd point out, if we select all of our newly created values and we insert a little histogram style chart, I'm gonna make this a little bigger. We can see that this looks like this data conforms to a normal distribution. And we have zero at the far left and one. We actually have, these are incremental blocks of values that Excel has chosen, but our, we know our maximum value is one. If you go ahead and right mouse click on your chart and you tell it to add data labels, you can actually see the number of observations atop each bar in the chart. And we do have one out here for one and another one over here for zero. Now let's talk standardization. In standardization, we're gonna take our set of values, whether they be positive, negative, or a mix of both, and we're going to recharacterize them in line with the standard normal distribution where the mean is zero and we have standard deviations of one. Don't confuse the normal distribution with normalization. Normalization takes your data from zero to one. Standardization puts it on a bell curve. In Excel, you can do standardization manually or you can use the standardize function. The formula to standardize looks like this. You take your value and subtract the mean of your range and you divide by the standard deviation of your range. We're gonna do the standardization manually first and then we'll use the Excel function. Here's the formula. We're gonna need the mean of the range and the standard deviation of the range. So I went to my column H here for the daily percentage change. And down at the bottom, I went ahead and added the mean, which I used the average function <clears throat> for my range. And then for the standard deviation, I used the standard deviation of a population for the same range. So if we scroll up to the top, using our formula, we're gonna enter the formula manually. I'm gonna take my value and subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation. And my first standardized value using manual is right here. Now let's use the Excel function. If you type standardized, little tip here, if you just hit the tab key at that point, it'll set it up for you. You want your value first. The next argument is your mean which I forget what cell that's in. So let's go down there. 
And then continuing to reference the formula here, we need our standard deviation. Last, we can close that off. And one thing I forgot to do was to fix these values, make them absolute references. So if I can do that, I can paste these all the way down. And these should be the same in both columns all the way to the bottom. And just looking down, it looks like they are. So let's take a look at our data. Down at the bottom, I went ahead and filled in the minimum value, negative 7.29, as well as the maximum. That's kind of interesting. So the the worst bad day in the S&P 500 during this 10-year period was greater in magnitude than the best good day. I guess that's a one way of interpreting that. These are outliers in our data set. And our mean is zero and our standard deviation is one as we expected. So let's uh, go up one of these data sets and let's graph our data again. I want to see what this looks like. We'll do another histogram type of chart. And you can see that, well, those aren't broken up by standard deviations, but the, the data looks like it does basically fit a normal distribution. If we change this chart type, to a scatter chart. That may be an, actually a more meaningful way of looking at this because we have 2,263 observations or 2,263 days over 10 years. So from left to right is, is basically time. This was back in 2011 and this is uh, the end of 2019. It's kind of interesting. So we go through these periods in the S&P 500 of extreme volatility and then we calm down and then we have another uh, period of volatility and little ones in between there. In case you've forgotten what it looks like, here's a normal distribution and 95% uh, about actually 95.4% of the observations lie between plus and minus two standard deviations. Let's take a look at that. On our scatter plot, here's negative two standard deviations and here's plus two. So it looks like about 95% of these observations do fall within that range. One last thing I'd like to do to kind of sanity check our data is pull this apart. And I'm going to try to pick a point that's right on this mean line, the zero line that goes through the middle of our observations. Looks like that one's right on the line right there. If you hover over that, that's point number 27, negative point zero one seven. Let's see what that point is. I'm going to move this graph over here. So here's the negative point zero one seven. And that daily percentage change was four hundredths of a percent. That kind of makes sense because if you remember, our mean in this column was 0 0.0005. That's very close to the mean. So it looks like Excel has done a very good job of standardizing our data set. So to wrap it up, I just wanted to give an example of why you might want to do this. So I took our S&P 500 exchange traded fund standardized data and I just moved it over to a fresh new worksheet and then I repeated the whole exercise for a total bond market ETF symbol BND I think it's a, a Vanguard total bond market fund 
Let's go ahead and plot the daily percentage change in the bond market versus the large cap stock market on a standardized basis. So we know the bond market doesn't move as much percentage wise each day, but on a standardized basis, what does it look like? So I'm going to pick a chart type here. I'm going to do a line chart this time, and I'm not going to specify anything right now except where it's going to be. So let's select our data. We'll add a series, and the series name is going to be that. And the values, I'm just going to do 10 days worth. Just 10 days. Okay, so there's the stock market for 10 days, up and down. Now let's add another series for that name and we'll pick off 10 days from that bond market fund as well. I'm gonna add <clears throat> the dates, 10 of those as my horizontal axis. One more thing I wanna do is format the major grid lines. I like to throw those in so we can really see what's going on now. Let's pick a day. How about this first day, the 4th to the 5th? We saw the stock market actual percentage change was up half a percent. But on a normalized basis, it was up 0.5 or half a standard deviation. So that's this move right here in blue. Now the bond market in typical fashion was moving opposite the stock market during this period. You have a four plus tenths of a percent drop in the bond market. But on a normalized basis or standardized basis, that's a really big drop for the bond market depicted right here. So this is uh, kind of useful to look. The bond market, although it's less volatile than the stock market, during this period on a, on a standardized basis, it was making quite bigger moves than the, the stock market. If you've enjoyed the video content in this video, please let me know. Please send a comment. Please let me know about projects you'd like me to work on or topics you'd like me to discuss. And thanks for visiting Spreadsheet Geek.